post COVID-19 religiosity. Uh, will religiosity increase or decrease after COVID-19? Are we going to see more religiosity or are we going to see less religiosity uh, in the era of COVID-19? Um, now, we did see that there's a lot of pastors, a lot of Christian pastors, preachers, uh, that are basically asking folks to not socially distance, to not practice these safe guidelines, to break the stay-at-home orders, uh, you know, for Jesus. They want they want to do it for the for the big J, you know, the man upstairs. He's like, hey, get the fuck out of your houses, you know. Let me see your faces. Uh, get out of your house. Come into my house. I got some wine. We got some crackers. We got some books. Uh, we'll read you some stories. We'll tell you some things. Uh, come on out. Gather in uh, <laughs> in groups of of hundreds. And uh, if you, my honest opinion is this. I think Jesus probably just wants to be left alone, especially, especially now, like, especially now. This is like, I just want some peace and quiet. I've been, I've been trying to get peace and quiet for 2000 years. You guys keep levying prayers and shit at me. I just want to like chill out. I just want to read some books, you know, fucking lay on a cloud. I don't know. Just leave me alone. The family research council uh, said that these these churches that are calling for uh, people to um, go to attend these services are are in defiance of common sense. Um, and look, there's a lot of arguments, right? There's a lot of arguments of whether we should be quarantining as much as we are, whether should, we should be out there trying to gain antibodies. And there's a lot of issues. We don't know how this virus is operating. Uh, the severity of this uh, virus is higher than a f common flu. It is a uh, it is a a um, uh, a lung disease. Uh, it is an upper respiratory disease. So you know um, it does create a lot more complications than the common flu. Uh, COVID nineteen in the in the short amount of time has surpassed uh, what a common flu flu would do in one year in terms of uh, casualties and fatalities. Um, so, you know, we're not really sure. Am I saying that the stay at home orders need to be put into place forever? No, of course not. That's ridiculous. What we need to do is use that common sense, right? If we know that the viruses are going to be transferred by, um, you know, uh, fluid mist or whatever, uh, yeah, it seems like the order for the masks is the right thing to do. Now, do we need to go crazy and overboard with it? Like if we're exercising, put a mask on your face? No, that's a little, that's a little ridiculous. You're, you're literally confining your, your breathing. You shouldn't do that. You need to be able to, you know, breathe and, uh, and have regular breathing when you exercise and putting a mask on is going to, uh, decrease that. Uh, should we keep a mask on when we are in our homes? No, that's a little over the top. Um, are there good viruses? Are there good bacteria that we need in our system? Absolutely. Do we need sunshine? Absolutely. Do we need to be interactive with each other as people? Absolutely. And we can all do that. Just right now, it has to be uh, in, in less amounts. That's what it needs to be. We have to do it just a little bit less so that later we can do it a lot more. There's a lot of other plans out there in terms of how we can regain um, you know, going back out to shows and restaurants and fucking getting your, your dumbass haircuts. Um, there is a way to do that. Herd immunity. I've talked about herd immunity before, but herd immunity doesn't work if you don't have a plan. If you don't come up with how are we going to treat people when they get sick, when they get sick and start exhibiting symptoms of COVID-19, which is the disease, by the way, COVID-19 is not the virus. COVID-19 is the disease. The virus is SARS-CoV-2, which, similar to SARS-CoV-1, uh, is a uh, um, another upper respiratory disease, and um, and it and same thing, right? There was really no cure for it. We had to come up with a treatment plan. So it's like, okay, so how do we come up with a treatment plan for this disease so that it doesn't overwhelm our fucked up healthcare system, so that we don't need to. It, like people that have heart attacks and people that have like, you know, uh, emergency conditions that come up can still go to the hospital. 
Do we create treatment facilities for this? So all this stuff needs to be thought about, but none of that stuff is going to happen if these numbers spike way the fuck up. And, and they will if we continue to just go out there and, you know, lick each other's faces like we were doing. Um, just a little bit of this is going to be fine. You know, maybe don't go to church on Sundays. And that's sort of what uh, uh, what, what they're what they're kind of saying is is just stay like chill out, stay at home. Um, you know, uh, there's different ways of of still interacting with each other. We just have to be a little bit more creative. Um, really, like this this order though, it kind of reminds me of like a new way of uh, uh, like a like a new snake handling church. I don't know if you guys have heard about snake handling churches. My good friend Stuart Huff pointed me to snake handling churches. Brilliant comedian. Highly recommend you check out Stuart Huff. Um, but Stuart was telling Stuart has a bit about snake handling churches, and, and the and the gist of what snake handling churches are is uh, they give you like a live snake, and they make you hold it, and it and the snake will bite you, and if you don't die from the poison, that's because you have the love of Jesus. Um, now in most of these situations, like they don't say that they have, they have removed the poison venom glands from the snake or they've like defanged them enough that, uh, they're not going to poison you or anything. So like, it's kind of bullshit. Uh, but this is sort of like the same thing, right? Like it, conceptually speaking, it's like come to the church, uh, gather in, in, in a group of a couple hundred people, keep your faith around and, uh, God will protect you. God will protect you from the COVID, if you come to church on every Sunday with you and a hundred of your best people from your community and gather in a small space, sitting right next to each other, saying, peace be with you, you know, kind of singing songs really loud, spraying that mist into the air, touching each other's mist, spit covered hands, sharing all that peace. And God will protect you because if you don't get COVID, then you got God's love. If you got COVID, then you didn't have God's love. Just like if you got, if you died from the poison, you didn't have God's love, right? Not that you fucking got bit by a venomous snake. <laughs> like, like maybe don't get bit by a venomous snake. How about how about we just put that rule out there? That seems like a pretty fucking solid rule, right? <laughs> Which is like, I feel like God's like, nah, bro. I don't, I don't want you to, I don't want you to leave your house. You know, like. God's God's been staying. I don't know if you've noticed, but God's been socially distancing himself from us for quite some time. You know, like the last time he took the form of man, he came down as Jesus. And that was like 2000 years ago. You know, God's like, no, nah, guys, I'm done. Like you guys are fucking nuts. You guys are fucking crazy. I'm going to socially distance myself from you guys for like, I don't know. Um, what's for, how long is forever? Cause that's, that's how long I think I'm going to socially distance myself for forever. You guys are nuts. You guys are fucking nuts. But these evangelicals, um, and these hardcore Christians, they, they are not, um, they're worried that if they exercise this level of caution, that it's going to take people away from the faith. That's what they're concerned about. Uh, they're they're worried that if they side with science, if they side with logic and morality, then this this magic notion of faith that your faith will protect you and your faith will save you all the time, and that's a that's an absolute that people can believe in, uh, will no longer have power. And if they don't have power, how the fuck are they going to exploit poor people and steal money from them? You got to be able to exploit people if you're going to take money from them. Now there have been online services, right? Um, there's been a bunch of churches um, that um, that have online services that are doing like Zoom services, you know, uh, just like I'll, I'm doing like Zoom comedy shows. They're doing Zoom services, but the problem is um, attendance to these have been reported to be a lot lower. Um, people have not been attending these services as much. Um, and, uh, and that, I mean, you know, that kind of sucks because it is one of those things where it sucks in the sense of like, I feel like some of these preachers believe in the religion itself. Like they are like, hey, don't judge each other based on skin color or who people choose to love. Love everybody. Make sure your neighbors are taken care of. Have a sense of community, which is kind of like what the point of religion is. Have a sense of community. Take care of each other. Make sure that you're that you love each other. Make sure that, you know, if if your neighbor doesn't have 
uh, something they and you do like share that with them, you know, like um, remember how Jesus beat the shit out of bankers? Maybe that's a thing we should try to do. Uh, maybe we should be going to Wall Street and beating the shit out of some bankers. I don't know. These are just things in the book. Like maybe socially distance, maybe use some common sense. And I feel bad that the numbers are declining for these uh, online services, you know. So the real question is, will religiosity increase or decrease because of, because of COVID-19 and the way that churches and different religious organizations have been acting in, in this situation? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty unsure based on these things, right? Because you have a lot of different sort of reactions going on right now. Uh, because you could very much have um, a, a revival of enlightenment in people. Um, you could have an evolution of thought in people after all this. Uh, because collectively, uh, we are, um, we are, uh, uh, we're going through a very difficult time right now, collectively, as a, as a species, as, as a, as, as human beings, right? Uh, as the working class, we're going through a pretty tough time. So when we get out of this, we are indefinitely going to be changed. We are going to be coming out of, uh, the article I read called it the collective PTSD. And that's possibly true. Um, but what are we going to do with that? Are we going to just go back to complacency, right? Are we going to go back to just doing things the way that they were done? Or are we going to push harder and pay a lot more attention to what the real problems in the world are, not the superficial ones, not the, oh, Trump tweeted this thing. Oh, he's an or like, no, those are all superficial bullshit. There's real authoritarian problems that we need to push back against, right? There's, you know, are people going to kind of wake up from that and have this moment of enlightenment? Or are they going to do what, what the other possibility with this religiosity is that when we come out of, when we come out of this, people will sit there and be like, see, I knew it. I had my faith the whole time. I knew it. If I just believed in Jesus enough, I knew that Jesus would get us out of this. And it's like, I don't think that's what fucking did it. And that's the question that, um, um, that we have. And, and it could go either way because you have a lot of people that are trusting and paying attention to the science, understanding that, you know, Hey, we don't have all the answers. Um, you know, but, but, what we do have is a uh, broken and corrupt economic system that is not working, that is not helping us in this, in this current situation. So we have to kind of act uh, differently in that. Um, so, but then there are also other people that are like, I want to get a haircut. I want to go back to work. I want to be a corporate slave, you know, like, so it, it, it just keeps going back and forth. Um, so I don't really have a definitive answer, but, but it does look like, it does look like, you know, there is a portion of people that did have faith that did go to church that are looking at people that are saying, Hey, come, come to these services, attend all these services. We're going to open up the churches specifically for these services so we can collect your tithings, um, and make money off of poor people and exploit your fear. Um, they're looking at that going, yeah, no, I don't, that is not why I, choose to believe in a higher power or anything. And there are people that are going to these online services too, that are kind of looking at it going, you know, this is not doing anything for me. Um, and part of the online, the, the decrease in the online services is like, no, what I really miss is the, the, the sense of community. Uh, so, you know, I, um, I don't know. I'm not sure what the exact answer is, but it, it is interesting to kind of see that there is two sides to this, that there aren't hundred percent religious people and there aren't hundred percent like atheistic people, which means that there's still work to be done. There's still, there's still, you know, uh, a lot of humanity that, that needs some enlightenment in their life. Um, we got a few comments for this section. Nick Green, do we need to wear our sunglasses inside? Absolutely. I do because I'm straining my eyeballs. Uh, <laughs> that's why I'm wearing my sunglasses. Um, I've been wearing these sunglasses during all of my videos because I have a pretty bright spotlight here that you can kind of see when I wave my hand over it uh, and the and the, the screen itself. I've, I've definitely increased the amount of screen time. So I'm wearing these sunglasses so that uh, uh, I, don't, I don't burn my eyes out. Uh, we need we should be testing everyone for at least antibodies. 
because uh, this has been going around since uh, January and definitely February. Yeah, you're right. I think we should be looking for antibodies. Um, that is a way that, uh, that, that we can move forward with this. Um, the vaccine is about 12 to 18 months away, but the antibodies are good um, because the antibodies are your body's natural defenses. Uh, and, you know, I think, I think the denial phase of, um, of American hubris really prevented us from, uh, um, uh, like social distancing to, to the utmost level works really well when you catch it early, right? When it's like, shit, there is about a, a, a 0.1% of our population that has this thing. Okay. Socially distanced for, um, two to four weeks. Great. You know, and then you put economic provisions in place so that, uh, um, you know, people don't starve or die or lose their jobs and things of that sort of thing. But th we didn't do any of those things. We hit it late and then we pretended like we didn't hit it late. Um, so now I think, you know, we really got to try something a little different where we, uh, what we, I mean, what we really need is a plan, right? We do need testing. We need testing of people getting the virus itself. And we need testing for people that have antibodies themselves. And the testing right now is only available to rich people. Uh, it's too expensive, even if you have insurance. It's too expensive. We, it should be free for everybody, especially in a global pandemic situation. Uh, but it's not. And uh, that's fucking dumb. Um, and it's irresponsible of a government not to do that. Uh, and our final comment, punch a Nazi in the face. Uh, you know, Nick, I'm, I'm against the punching Nazis uh, ideology. The, the, you're referring to the whole, you know, maybe we should beat the shit out of a banker. I know, I was doing a little character. Uh, but, you know, that is the only point where Jesus get, did get violent. Um, and I don't know if that's the right way to move about things. The whole punch a Nazi thing is, um, you know, they'll punch back. And realistically, um, they are in, on the same ground floor that we're at. Um, they are not some sort of elite. Uh, they are not some sort of economic rich elite um, that is trying to control the narrative and exploit people. I think they just have a lot of fear uh, and they turn that fear into anger and hate and they're very misunderstood. So I'm against the punch of Nazi thing, uh, but I do understand that they're not going to want to sit down and talk to someone like me. Um, and my policy is I did a whole video about this. I used to do this on stage. Uh, about why I'm against uh, the whole Nazi punching thing. Uh, first of all, I'm a pacifist, so there's that. I would much rather sit down and talk to you about why you believe in what you believe in, uh, so there's that, um, and try to understand where your your emotions are coming from, where your fears are coming from. Uh, but I also understand that that's not going to work 100% of the time, and that's when, you know, folks that are in the punch and Nazi camp are going to be waiting behind me. So the alternative is pretty clear is either you can sit down we can have a conversation or these 10 people are going to want to punch you in the face and kind of see which one they'll, they'll end up picking. Uh, but uh, I understand why, why that comment was, was, was thrown in there. Um, yeah. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, please make sure that you hit that like button and you hit the share button, uh, share this out with your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy content like this. Uh, I actually will be having some live stand-up comedy shows coming up, not in a, in a venue, but uh, I'm going to be doing some online Zoom stand-up comedy shows. Uh, the first one is actually going to be a special storytelling show uh, at the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival, which is now virtual on May 2nd at 9.30 p.m., uh, and then I'm going to be doing subsequent Zoom stand-up comedy shows called The Citizen Revolution uh, Comedy Show. Uh, tickets and details of all of these shows are going to be available on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, I hope you guys will come out and, uh, and check, that, check out those online shows. Uh, you can check out all of my uh, prior comedy videos on my website. You can check out past Road Reflections, Forkful of Noodles, uh, The Dispatches, Taboo Table Talk, my interview podcast, uh, as well as download all of my stand-up comedy albums as well. But if you would also like to make a donation, become a sustaining member 
uh, you can do so over on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com slash donate. Thank you so much to the people that have already donated, already share this thing, already subscribe to the channel, uh, that, that hit that like button at every video. Uh, you guys are awesome. You guys are the best. We're going to get through this damn thing together, and hopefully we'll be able to see each other face-to-face -face real soon. But till then, stay safe, and we'll see you on the road.